Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's webinar. My name is Adam, and I'll be your moderator. We're joined by Dr. Scott McLean, and he will review how he leverages his Meta Intraoral Scanner and SprintRay 3D Printer for his dental implant workflows. If there are any questions, please add them into the Q&A section, and we'll reply via email within two business days. Henry Shine is not offering CE credit for viewing or attending tonight's presentation, live or on demand. And this webinar is sponsored by SprintRay. Dr. McLean, take it away. Hello, this is Dr. Scott McLean, and today we're going to be talking about the digital workflow with relationship to dental implants. So we'll be specifically talking about intraoral scanning using the Medit i700. This is a fabulous new tool that has just been upgraded, and you can we'll sp spend some time talking about this and really looking into why this is a special tool. We'll also spend some time talking about sprint ray printing, and this is my Pro 95 that I have. And we'll talk to you also about other items that I've recently purchased, which is one, the Pro Wash and Dry, and also the Pro Cure 2. We'll talk how these will work to create templates and to get us into the correct spot when we're doing dental implants. We'll talk about a little bit about materials, and we'll see all the new materials that are online and you can see that uh, we have splint materials, surgical guide materials, and of course then the new printer that's coming out, the Pro S Dental 3D Printer. And why I'd want to buy this one because you can see that this type of printer is revolutionary. It's uh, going super fast, super accurate, and we'll just show you a little bit about how this is being used to create exact position for dental implants. So we'll be focusing on the Medit i700, which is also called the Cabo i700, and then the Pro95. This is the one I have in my own office. So I'll show you what I'm doing. So I have three scanners in my office, and um, I like the ones that don't have subscriptions, and that the software is going to be upgraded on the laptop. And this is something I would recommend that you would be purchasing, is having some type of laptop because all the scanners are very accurate and it's about speed and accuracy. Accuracy comes first and this is always a key. So a lot of these scanners have that, but the, the carts I think are gonna be on their way out because of the upgrade. So looking at this Medit i700, it really is my favorite scanner that I'm using at this current moment. You can see that this is gonna be used to generate STL and PLY files. So you may say, well, what the heck is that? Well, we'll show you. What you're gonna do is take a number of images, thousands of them, and stitch them together. And it makes a model that's gonna be shown like this on the screen. And this 3D model is gonna be used to do implants, to do bite planes, to do crowns, to do all kinds of different things. What's unique about this as well is you have this screen that allows you to feel like you're at the airport, kind of that you're sending and seeing things come and go. So it allows you to keep track of where your files are which is very, very, very cool. So why another CBCT and uh, intraoral scanner? It's not just a replacement now. It's a, it's a tool that's used to start to create the models so that we're, when we're doing dental implants, we can pre-plan and have this full color scan, which is called a PLY file. And you can use this uh, verification tool that's in the scanner to go from pink to blue and to really have this accurate when you're doing the scan. So our goal is to have the dental assistant be doing a lot of the scanning for us. When we come in, we will do the final scans and uh, do the components of this work that is gonna really make a big difference for having accuracy. Here she's doing a, the initial uh, type of scan, which is gonna be like an initial impression. And the, the more this turns blue, the more accurate this is. So the pink needs to be kind of wiped out. And so she's going back and forth and you can see that she's creating this scan using multiple images. So our goal is to start somewhere in this digital journey. And by far, you have to start with having the intraoral camera. And this is about making little interlocking triangles. So having an intraoral scanner is gonna be your key to where you start the digital workflow. You may say, well, why would I do that? because we want to make these small files that are going to be little triangles that will create an image and the image is going to be used to fabricate templates, make temp shells, make temporaries to make all the different things that we need 
So we want to have this smooth, so we want to make this as many small triangles as possible rather than big triangles, because big triangles are bumpy, small triangles are smooth. So what you're envisioning here is a triangular mesh, and this is a PLY file, which is color. And the STL files are actually black and white or just a single color. And what you'll notice if you come in close is that there's small triangles that are making up this mesh design. If we come in close, this is what makes the curve and the shapes of the teeth are very small triangles. And so this is the key to doing scanning. And you can take these triangles and erase them, modify them, change them. And uh, so this is what the world is now doing instead of alginate. So looking at the Med at I-700, it's number, uh, won a number of awards. And the red dot ward is certainly something that you should really take notice of. And also this best in class. So it's really doing a great job. So what do we do with an STL file, and a PLY file? We're going to acquire, plan, and produce them. So we collect them, modify them, stitch them, design them, and we plan with it so we can mill, print, share, and store. And then these files can be utilized. For instance, on this file that's showing in front of us, we're able to erase the tooth where we're going to do the dental implant. Why would you want to do this? So you can get closer, so you can get the implant in the exact position. So you look at all these features, and the number one feature you have to think about always is high accuracy. You want to have higher accuracy so that we'll end up having a product that's going to deliver extreme accuracy so that we get really great precision. So looking at this Metadai 700, it's got 70 frames per second, which is super fast, and its accuracy is about 10 microns plus or minus 0.98. So this is super, super, super precise. And so we are getting to the level that these have to really be uh, understood so that we can realize that this is one of the best ways you could possibly do this. So let's have a look at the scanner. It's an I-700 intraoral scan. And we're going to be doing some implants on a lady. What you would do is start the scan. And this scanner has you know, a number of features like a detachable cord. It's got small buttons that are you know, easy to use, so on and off buttons, and also rotational buttons on the back. And so it has a number of features that start to make this a, a very good tool for doing implant dentistry. So our goal is to get a scan so we can make a template. And so we'll work on getting this with a number of images that we are working on. The scanner itself is super fast. It's twice the speed of its predecessor, the i500. Uh, it's a feather light. It's got this UV LED light on the side, so it's cleaning itself inside all the time. And this under 180 degree reversible tip. So this is the type of features that I really am, are, these are the type of features that I'm looking for. And uh, it's kind of cool when you start to see the, the advancements. So looking at the differences between a USB and a cart, we have to kind of focus on that, well, what are you going to be using to do the computing? The compu you have to buy a computer when you have a USB style um, scanner, and this is one of the downfalls of it, but you can keep buying brand new computers rather than buying really expensive carts. And I think that that's one of the, the uh, issues that I'm running into is that I pay subscription fees for one of my um, scanners or two of them, and I'm not getting updates on my scan as reliability and now my scanner is outdated after four or five years and uh, so I'm being told that I need to update. Well you can update the camera and not really update the computer so there's some savings and costs quite a bit less. So no powder, uh, color versus black and white. You don't want something black and white. So this is a, a portable scanner. One of the other features I like about it is that it has this capability that when you turn it on it's on for the day because you have a, it's connected to a laptop. And as you move the laptop, you don't have to power it down and power it on. This is a feature that is really important to a clinic that has multiple operatories. So the iOS digital workflow can be shared in a number of things. We're looking at the surgical implant workflow today, and this is going to be our main focus. But if you're an orthodontist or if you're a dental hygienist or periodontist, there's different workflows that you would use for the scanner. So are they accurate? Absolutely. These are very accurate. And uh, if we're going from analog to digital. You're improving your accuracy because you're having less bubbles, less expansion, less wax up. 
less measuring of the water, hot and cold, freezing. So we have to think about how fast they're going to be traveling too. We can scan someone and send it within 3,000 kilometers away. This can go very, you can go as far as you want, but it's going to be in 10 minutes. This is the beauty of it. Our goal on tonight's project is to, going to be to scan and then to make a template and have this template is going to be a STL or PLY file. And then these can be printed and these are consumable files. My next go to is going to be to print a guided implant temp shell or temporary, which will also be coming very soon for me. And uh, this is going to be an STL file that I would put on the uh, patient uh, at the time of surgery to create something that's going to look really beautiful for healing. So we want to make sure we don't get this poor placement on the left. We rather want to see this quality of care on the right, which is going to be having the template designed so that you're able to put the implants into the correct depth and angulation, utilizing this little template that's printed on the Sprint Ray printer. So our goal is to design this. So we first would scan the patient, then we would design the template in some software, and then we would print it. And this can be done within hours of having the patient into your office. So are they accurate? Yes, they're accurate to 10 to 15 microns. And this is more than accurate enough to be doing the objects that uh, we want to do in dentistry. So it's got evidence-based dentistry and there's all kinds of papers that are written on this topic. And it's our focus to kind of look at that. So the digital impression is accurate and it has very high speed. It's got the screen interface and the size of the camera is something that is getting smaller and smaller all the time. You do have to sacrifice a little bit of size of the scanner. If you're going to have a, a scanner that um, you know, has a battery pack, it seems like. It seems like those are going to be a little bit bigger. Also, there's some scanners that just are bigger. It's just the way it is. Training and support is also an issue. Make sure that you ask what you're going to get when you get one of these scanners. I've been very happy with what I had. So we'd start out with the CBCT x-ray. Get that scan taken when we're doing a dental implant workup, we call it. So we're going to capture the image of the patient, and then bring, be able to bring that image and start to do what's called a fusion. So during a fusion, you take your CBCT x-ray, which is a DICOM file. Then you take an intraoral scan, which is called an STL file. And you're going to mirror these two together. When you mirror them together, you're going to be blending them so that you can do the planning with the bone, but get, get the accuracy of the STL file. These are accurate to 10 microns. So when you have something fit on them, the fit is being generated on that STL file. So this is happening in planning software. I'm using DTX Implant Studio, and my goal is to plan the implant to the proper depth. And then this is gonna enable me to have this so that it's gonna be a guided surgery. So how do you see the prosthetics first? We would plan where the tooth is going to be and then plan where the zenith is going to be, which is the high point. And then we can look on the right side. You can see this arrow. This is put to the zenith and I can start to draw a line from this dot. And you can see that the arrow is showing where this is. And if I draw a line 90 degrees to the facial plate on this DTX software, you can see that I'm able to then tell that this implant would be too shallow if I left it here. I want this to be at least 3 to 3.5 millimeters below this zenith reference line. The yellow line is called zenith reference. And if you want to read an article, I wrote an article about this. You can look it up in, and uh, find that in, I think, in compendium. So if we put this at 3 millimeters, we're going to put the implant platform depth to this distance. So this is done in any kind of implant planning software. And we will put this implant to that depth. And then this is allowing us to make a template. So once we know where the implant needs to go, we would check it both in two different planes. But it's going to be based on this zenith reference, which is tangential to this zenith reference is going to be three millimeters deep, this line. So this allows us to have the soft tissue and to create the necessary uh, work that we need to have this done to that level. So if we look at this, this will determine our crown design as well, because now we have enough space to make the crown design. We can angle the implant and fabricate this 
uh, software driven outcome. So we want to know the restorative first so we can deliver the template and have this go into the exact position. So we'll generate a template which will be an STL file that we'll take to the, the uh, printer to our sprint ray and we'll put this in the sprint ray so that we can print this. Then my dental technician will then add a metal ring into this template and this fabrication will then be used to place the implant. So there are a number of printers on the market as well. A lot of the products are going to be SLA or DLP printers. DLP is a digital light projector. If we look at the accuracy, we save this one spot for the sprint ray because it's a very high performance type of printer. And a lot of these are good printers, but that sprint ray, uh, the, the Pro S, has really got a lot of features like heated pads, accuracy in Z values or Z values and X and Y. So we start to get this high accuracy, high speed, and this is what we want to have in a printer. Now you'll notice that most of them have an orange hood. This is because you're dealing with ink. So they now have um, print materials. And so the print materials are photosensitive. So the DLP printers are, seem to be the faster and better printers for accuracy and speed. And there's a lot of product on, online. You can see that uh, there's a number of things you can do, with surgical guides to uh, models to... Um, nano ceramics for doing implant bridges. So our goal is to have a lot of product in order for us to make this. This is the printer I have in my office, the Pro 95. It's the predecessor of the Pro S and super fast and it's uh, done an amazing job to generate the, the tools that we want to have. We're doing a lot of implant templates. These templates can be printed really in less than an hour very quickly. But this Pro 55S is a high performance type of printer. This is going to take it to the new level. You'll be able to print temporaries for your implants, clusal guards, implant dentures, um, which is going to be through the nano ceramics, indirect, indirect bonding trees. So a number of different features. And this is the kind of the goal to doing this. So here we are generating some uh, dental implant templates, which are guides for dental implants. And you can see that the guides are on this platform and it's being printed by a light that's kind of doing a stamp light pattern, which is a DLP pattern. We're going to show you how you take this and then generate this workflow that will create super fast and accurate templates for you. So this is a system. That's what I like about this. It's a system that generates a lot of interest because in a dental office you don't want to have open chemicals and uh, different products that are out. This goes print wash cure. And so this is the, the key to this and we'll show you how this kind of works together. So then you'd sterilize these in an autoclave and uh, get them ready for surgery. So this is that print wash cure processing which is all done in internal baskets or internal machines and so you just don't even see what's going on. So it's a pretty cool type of system. So here's how it works. So the sprint ray workflow would go that my dental technician would take the STL file that we just planned in the computer, planning where we want our implant. And this is designed so that we can tell exactly where the implant platform is going to be on this end uh, of this dental implant treatment. We carry this to the mouth and put it in the mouth and uh, generate what we need. So our goal is to have this be uh, something that we're going to tip here a little bit and you can tip them and put more on the platform but you'll make this scaffolding and this is what holds it as you're printing it. These legs are printed so it'll hold it off of the uh, platform and allow you to get this into the right area. So here's the Pro S which I do, do not have. I, I would like to have this but uh, here's the one we have, the Pro 95. And what they recommend is you're going to stir this resin a little bit, get it moving, get it all flowing so that you can come in and do your print job. So the print job has been put into the, the computer of the printer itself. After 41 minutes, we get a print job. You can see that here it is. So here is my dental technician taking it off. Now it's still a little bit moist and damp. We need to cure it in order to make this be a product that's going to be nice and pure and fitting really well. So he'll put it into the Pro Wash Dry 
Let's have a look inside of this before we put the chemicals. And this is at one of the shows when some, someone was showing me that there's two reservoirs. One has super clean alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, and the other one is then the, the, the um, one that's washing a little bit more. So it goes through cycles and using very kind of clean and then uh, cleaning up this uh, template so that there's not the residue on it. So there's a big propeller inside that pushes the material into this um, template and this is going to make it so that you get a really clean and precise fitting prosthesis. So this is going to be the, the template so the isopropyl alcohol wash is put on. It's not going to take very long. It takes very little time and it goes from one side to the other of this reservoir to keep it clean and keep it so that it's going to be quick. There's 12 minutes remaining here and so my technician is just uh, so amazed at how fast this goes. He says it sounds like it's taken off a little bit because of that propeller. And you can see that once it's washed, it's ready to go into the next workflow period. So we can take this along the route and you can see that there's the washed and dried unit. And now we're going to want to cure this a little bit more. So we're going to take it and prepare it for the curing unit. So he's going to remove this from the platform and then take this to the uh, cure, Procure 2. And so he'll snip it and get some of these legs off of it, which are the scaffolding. So he has some refinement tools to clip it and to clean it and to get it ready to go into the Procure. So he's snapping these little components off and eventually he will take a little grinder and make sure that they're all nice and smooth. And then he'll put a sleeve inside of this too. So he'll cement the sleeve We'll take the sleeve and snap it into position. And you can see that as this gets into position, that it's going to be in a spot that is going to be exactly where the implant's going to go in the future. So this is what determines how deep the implant is, what position it is, what the angle is. So then he'll put it in the Procure 2, and he'll allow this to go through a curing cycle. It's going to be less than 2.5 minutes. And our last curing unit used to take about an hour. So this is a tremendous speed improvement in this post-processing type of uh, after print and what you do. So this is going to take about 2 minutes and 28 seconds left. And then this will be ready for us to start to finish it off. And then um, you can take it out of here and allow us to have that really great product that we're going to use to place the implant. So when you take this to the mouth, it's going to be put into position. and This is going to control how deep the implant is, what angle the implant is, and what position it is. So it keeps it away from teeth, keeps it away from sinuses, keeps it away from nerves, and allows you to know kind of that you've seen where this implant's going to go. So this patient had an extraction, and now we're going to place the implant. We'll go in with a two millimeter twist drill and then this template guide is going to allow us to fit it into the template and allow us to have the exact position where this implant is going to go. So as we go in, these drills are about nine millimeters longer, actually 10 millimeters longer. And because of the, the guide sleeve, as they go in, the first drill will go to the full length. And sometimes we'll even go a little bit longer if we're going to do an immediate temporary on the upper. And so this looks perfect here. And then we'll come in with the second drill. And the second drill, we may go a little short based on what the first drill felt like. So many times I'm going to create a reverse Christmas tree effect so that if we place an immediate implant, we're going to get that into the bone that's a little bit thinner and we want to have this kind of grab. So in allowing us to do this, we can see that the next drill, and we're going to go we're going to go only a little bit in, and this allows us to make the osteotomy a little bit more firm when we go to place the implant. So now it's just as simple as turning your RPMs down and the torque down a little bit. So we want this to be torqued at about 45 Newtons, and we'll position this implant so that we can have this in the ideal spot. Here we go. Put it in and the osteotomy has been prepared. And then we'll go at a slow RPM to place the implant and get this implant into the exact position.
it's pretty straightforward and allows you to be very successful at avoiding other structures, avoiding nerves, avoiding, which uh, there's not a big nerve here, obviously, but you're on the lower. And then, of course, uh, avoiding other roots. This is one of the key spots that you have to be careful. And then we can tighten it down and we'll take the template off and check it. And then your implant surgery basically is going to be done. So then when the patient comes back three months later, we're going to take the Medit scanner and we're going to put an ELO scan body into the implant and scan it. So we'll take the healing abutment out, put an ELO scan body in, and then scan it and get it into the DTX software or whatever software you're designing your crown. And then once you do your crown design, you can send it to a local mill, a local lab. You can also send it to centralized um, milling and printing. This can go off to a major facility, or you can send it to your print rate, your, your sprint rate scanner and printer. And then you can also generate some of the things you'll need for doing, for instance, contacts. So you can have the whole uh, implant crown ready and then have it on a model so that you can see it. Let's have a look at another case. In this case, we're going to be placing a implant crown. So the patient's in uh, out healing and has had their implant for three months. Coming back, you can see that we have this healing abutment. So we'll go ahead and start the, the plan. So the, the goal is to get this healing abutment off, and then what we'll do is take a scan to make a final crown. So we'll put the floss on the driver to make sure it's safe. And then we'll go in and we'll take the healing abutment off using a Unigrip driver. This just takes a couple minutes to take off, and then we're going to be inside. And so my dental assistant has already done some of the scanning prior to me coming in. So she scanned the upper arch, the lower arch, and also the bite with the healing abutment in place. So once I take the healing abutment off, which is required by the, the dentist to do this, I'll come back in with the Medit scanner, which is branded as a Cavo X700. And so she's prepared this for me. So I'm going to come in and, and scan this emergence profile. So she's cut a box out so that I can come in and, and do that detailed scan. And uh, the start is going to be to have the emergence profile of this area. And I'll go in and just finish the scan. So this is the first upper arch scan. And then we'll go ahead and start to do the, the next step. So I have a good look at it first. And you can see that it looks fine. And uh, we can see the reliability test. We need to do a little bit of filling in where this is uh, going to be green in all different areas. It's a good check and balance that you can do to make sure that uh, you're getting this job done properly. We go back over and I start to scan the emergence profile. And you'll notice that the, the soft tissues are now being captured. And I'll capture the interproximal area. This is a critical area to have when you're doing contacts. We want to have the emergence profile and then the interproximal contacts of the two adjacent teeth. It's the most important aspect of this impression. The method is easy to get into this area. I'm just using one hand to lift the soft tissues like the lip. And then you can see me going in and doing many, many images to stitch this and to create that exact detail that I need to make the crown. This will be sent to the lab. You can see as I'm going around that area, and capturing it, it's going to be stitched into the original scan. This scan was done when the patient had their template made many months ago and they had the surgery. So we keep that, and then we cut a little piece of it away and then start to add in other aspects. So we'll turn off the scanner now rotate around and see the scan. So if I move this uh, with my finger, you'll be able to see that it controls the screen. It takes a little bit of practice to get used to this. And uh, but I'm just moving this bottom mouse button. And this is going to take that scan and move it around so I can have a good look at it. So we'll put the ELO scan body on and we can Position this. I usually try to do this so that the flat surface is on the outside. And you'll see that when we put this into position, and I'm able to tighten it down 
And this will act like the, well, this is an impression coping, a digital. And so it's going to act to position this implant hex to the adjacent teeth. So we get a real good look at where this should be. You can see that the flat surface is then going to be captured by the scanner. So you can have a good look at this and our goal is to have this show up in our implant level impression. And then we'll go back over and we'll scan that ELO scan body and then pick that scan so that we can have the technician to be able to fabricate the new crown. You can see how well positioned this implant is. It's all done digitally. This is the key to it, is making something that's going to be digital and have, have uh, adequate space around the implant, around the crown, and have the fabrication be something really good. So here we are scanning that ELO scan body. And then it's going to stitch this into the already scanned upper arches you'll be able to then see where this is going to fit from a 3D point of view. So we get a good image on this and uh, we'll take that and have the crown fabricated. We also have the lower arch, and make sure that we have a good position of that. So we have upper, lower arch and the bite record. And I'll just go over making sure that it's uh, in a good scan. You can see the reliability check letting me see where it's a bit thin, so I can make it perfect. We'll also take a bite record. So now we have all the information we need, and it's all stored in the Medit scanner. And we can send this off to the dental lab. They'll have the ELO scan body. They'll have the two adjacent teeth of the opposing arch. So now we just have to find the color and then put this all together in a blended pattern. So the song gives us feedback, and this is interesting. You can hear this. So the song is telling me that I'm on active scans and stitching together. If it goes low, then we know that the scan is not working properly. So it just gives us feedback, which I, I really like this. I think it's fun. You can put your own songs in there. This is an old song from the 80s that I'm sure everyone remembers. So when we get the crown back three, three weeks later, we're going to seat the crown and ask the patient a few questions, making sure it's going to fit. It's a bit tight here, so we're going to take it to the model, and we'll use the printed model. I, I feel a little pressure. We only want to adjust the interproximal contact on the one that the patient's really feeling. So we'll mark with the artifoil. This is a 12 micron articulation paper. And then I'll be able to take this and we can put it on the model. You can use your printed model from your sprint ray in order to fabricate a, a model and do your contacts on this. This is, this is what I really like the printed model for. As you can see, there's the contact. This is exactly where I'm going to adjust the case. We would use an 8850KR diamond and polish this with Shofu disc. And uh, then we can try this back in the patient's mouth to make sure that the pressure is off that, off that area. We don't want to do it on both sides because he hasn't complained about the other side. But we'll still check back and make sure that it's okay. Yeah, I don't feel pressure now. We'll finger tighten this and then it's, uh, it's all good for the patient. And you can see that this is going to be rectified. We've got good contacts. This has been fabricated with the Medit and also having a printed model. And we can see the printed model here that uh, enables us to then tighten this down and we get on to the next step. Tighten it to 35 newtons, hold for three to five seconds, Teflon, resin, and then the patient is good to go. Bite together, bite hard. Yeah. We want the patient to bite hard and in, in uh, heavy occlusion, we want light contact. In the back and go all the way over. Good and open. 
So this restoration has completely been made by digital. And you can see the contacts are great. We end up having, it's going to be light contact over the screw. We'll put some sterile Teflon in and then also some resin and cure that and we'll get this patient on their way. So it's a very great thing to be doing with digital. and uh, It's one of my favorite parts of my day now. Medic scanner can also do some pretty cool stuff on edentulous cases. You can see how accurate this looks. This lady came in, she had some issues with the uh, bridge that's released. You can see the 3D bite. And we'll notice that this case is, uh, when we put it back together, we can clone it and put her original bridge back on. And start to rescan this to try to find out where she is. You can also do a facial scan with the Medit scanner and find the nose, the lips, and this is just done by scanning the face with the wand and positioning this. This is super useful when you're trying to work out where these teeth are gonna go. Now on this last part of the program, I'd like to look at a case study. This is a new patient who came into my office and he asked, can you restore this implant? Looking at the implant, I could see that we had a little bit of an issue because I could see that the cover screw was at the surface of the tissue and this is always a problem because this means you don't have that space to do your restorative. So looking at this we reviewed the planning of the case and you can see that the patient had some issues and these issues were going to have to mean that we probably had to take this implant out. So can you restore this implant? We look at it and we can see that it's very shallow and this creates a problem for the restorative doctor and this was probably not planned on a computer, I would think, and it was probably free-handed in. So there's the cover screw, and we're going to get a closer image of this. You can see that the cover screw is at the surface, and it's actually above the bone surface. So we'll take a Medit scan, and we'll do an intraoral scan to capture all the images. And uh, our goal is then to generate some type of imaging so that we can really take this and put it into the CBCT x-ray and have a look exactly where this is and where we'd want it, how deep it should go, and this is going to be a case that will help us to kind of reverse engineer this uh, area. So now you can see that the, the scan is showing that this is indeed a problem and we just rotate it around you can see there's the issue. So we use the cut tool to cut some of the excess away. And this will enable the stitching to be done a little bit in higher precision because sometimes what happens is when you try to stitch this into software, it's nice to have the edges straight so that the computer doesn't get confused. So we'll have a look at the architecture of the teeth. You can see the triangles we've been talking about and this is the mesh, and this mesh is all done by the computer itself. You don't have to generate this at all. But this is how the surfaces have some uh, changes in architecture. And you can see as we change this from one surface that's showing to another that we can see, it's like you're looking at a topographical map. This is created because the triangles can create changes in architecture on the surface. Now we'll take a CBCT DICOM file. This is a pretty tall guy with big shoulders and you can see that uh, this scanner is good for this type of problem. So we'll end up putting the patient in position then holding him with his headrest and then taking a DICOM x-ray. Start to take the image and you can see that as the image is going around then it's going to create this uniform image of the patient allowing us to see in 3D. We're using DTX software, so we're gonna blend the DICOM file shown here. And there's a number of slices, and this is going to be brought into the computer so we can create the file for planning purposes. So there it is, we'll change the ISO values in order to generate the image. And then we'll level and align this, and we can see that when we do so, that we're going to generate very sophisticated view of the area. So here we can see that the implant 
is a very shallow uh, type of restoration. You can see it's above the bone level and there's a little bit of bone loss occurring in this area. So our goal is to look at this in relationship to where the actual MEDIT scan is. So we'll go back out and find the intraoral scan and we're going to blend this together. So you have those two files, the DICOM and the intraoral scan, and they're going to be generated together so that we can blend these two on the computer. So there's many different software programs that can do this. We're using DTX Implant Studio here. And um, you can see that when we put this together, we're stitching and merging those two files. And this is going to generate the necessary files for us to do the planning. So we'll check the alignment, making sure that it's aligned in the anterior and posterior. You can see that the alignment looks good. Looking at this area, we can see that the zenith is very close to where the top of the implant is. And we want to have at least 3 to 3.5 millimeters of space here. So this is a real problem for us. So we'll plan an implant on top of this just to see what it would look like if we had it at the ideal uh, dimension. And we'll put this into position and we'll just have a general look at this in a rotated view. We can put the cover screw on and see how it fits together. So the proposed zenith that I would like, I like to have it like the contralateral side. This is coincident with that. So we know that there is absolutely no space for restorative here for the soft tissues. We want to have 3 to 3.5 millimeters of soft tissue. And it's just not here on this case. So we'll end up taking the implant and we'll put it deeper. So we want it to be three millimeters below this zenith reference. Some people say four. I like to have three to 3.5. And you can see when we do this, we're going to measure the space from the zenith to the zenith reference to the implant. So you can see here it's three millimeters. So our goal is to have that so that we're going to generate that ideal depth for the next implant. So we can see that this implant is just not going to cut it. You can see the bone loss already occurring around this. So this is a nightmare if you inherit this type of case. We want this case to um, be ideal. So we'll go in and we'll choose you know, an abutment. We can put on the abutment and select that. And you can see that then this is going to give us the soft tissues that we need for this case. So we'll generate a model just to know where exactly we want the zenith to be. And this will allow us to plan this case to the correct depth. So if we take this implant out, we'll be able to then generate the ideal depth for the new implant. Because there is some bone above this that we can utilize. Now we're going to generate the template. So this is the way we would generate the STL file that we can send this file to the Sprint Ray printer. So we'll send this file to the, the dental lab. Then they'll take that file, put it in the printer, and then print it. Once they print it, then we'll be able to have a look at it, put the silver uh, guide inside of the template, the sleeve, and then we'll be able to do the surgery. So we have a DLP printer, which is the Sprint Ray, and then we'll use some surgical guide material to generate the exact position. So we're going to print it, then we're going to wash it and dry it, and then we're going to cure it. So doing those three uh, protocols, we're able to take it from one step into the other. So we'll place the PLY file in the printer, and we push the print button, just like you're putting ink, in, I mean ink into your printer and paper, and you can print these files. So there's the Sprint Ray platform, and it's got three different templates that are printed and these are being printed with a DLP type of light. And this light's going to generate the power that's needed to cure the resin. So it cures it in a very accurate way. There's the three files and they'll be taken off of the platform and then put through the 
um, wash and dry first and then the cure. So this is a great case to show how this is all interfaced together. So the resin tray, you can put different resins in different trays and you can swap these out. And so there's a number of trays that can be utilized. So as you bring this, you're going to put it into the tank, which will do the wash dry. You set it for the time. And then the pro wash dry is going to start. And this little propeller is going to start to push the material and then really clean off that printed template and allow you to have this so that it's going to then dry it after you're done. And we're going to take it out of this area and then put it into the uh, cure. So this, these machines are very efficient. They're self-contained. You don't have to kind of have materials and smells and things like that in your dental office. So once you put it in for the final cure in the Procure 2, you're going to be able to separate these and then have them so that they can cure and uh, have the cement ring put in so that this is going to be used for the guided surgery. So now the template is ready and this will be used to place the implant. So you come back and the surgery is going to be done in a fashion that's going to remove that implant. And so we'll take the cover screw off the implant. So you want to remove this in a very very low heat fashion and our goal is to have this so that we're not going to have problems with the uh, bone that's died because of the too much heat. So there's the cover screw. And you can see that we'll check the fit of the template. It's good and we can see that uh, we're excited about that fit and it makes it so that we'll be happy with how this is going to go. So a flap is then raised and then this is cleaned up and you can see the crestal bone loss that's occurring around the top of the implant. So it's not wise to try to restore this when it's in this position. So we're going to measure exactly how long the implant uh, is relative to this trephine and the trephine is going to go on the outside of the implant. What we'll do is just go down a few threads on this, so maybe three to four millimeters, and then um, we'll do the trefining very slow so we're not generating a lot of heat. So we'll use this implant retrieval tool to reverse torque this out. So we've trefined over the top part of the implant. Now we want to rotate the implant and take it out, causing very little damage if possible. We start to rotate this counterclockwise manner. You can see that this is grabbing quite nicely at this point. We can tap on it and there's a high pitch noise and we'll take the torque wrench and start to remove this implant. So you rotate this out and a lot of times in the upper jaw especially that uh, this is going to rotate out fairly easily. So we get rid of the implant. Get rid of the problem. And unfortunately, the patient's going to have to have a new implant placed in. So we will evaluate the area and then assess whether we can place the implant today. Sometimes we would come back and place the implant in two to three months, letting that heal. But the implant uh, came out rather easy compared to what you would think it would. So there's the osteotomy. So we'll now take the template that we've printed on our sprint ray and we'll put the guide in. You can see that when we put this together that we're able to place this in so it's going to guide that drill. And we're going to stay on the trajectory that the implant is uh, because we're not going to run too close to the adjacent root. And this will just keep it so it's going to be easier to place this implant and uh, for this to be done the same day. I have up my Instagram account for Global Dental Mentorship. Please stop by and give us a follow. Also on uh, Dr. Scott McLean. Give me a follow there. This would be great. So now we'll go back in and we will kind of take the first drill 
And that drill is going to be enabling us to go to the correct depth. So this is all pre-marked, so we can watch as this goes in. This is 10 millimeters longer and enables us to get into a position that's going to be ideal for placement. So the dry guided drill kit is oriented so that you would take one, two, and three drill guides. And this will enable you to get your implant into the ideal position. And the drills are oriented as well to match this. So the next drill up is uh, a little bit bigger and it fits into the drill guide to make it exact with the position of that template, which has been made by my sprint ray. And we'll go in and position this into that guide. There it is. So we get in here and we'll also drill down to the same depth as the first. Get this into position. And then we'll take the third drill and we'll do a little bit of preparation as well. So we'll position that implant into the depth and uh, we'll just check that for position and depth. Do that little wiggle. So we're going to place an on one tissue level abutment on this case and then we'll let this heal. And then the patient will come back and have the final restoration done in two months. So you can see that the benefit of the template and having the um, guided surgery, we captured everything with the Medit and then did the planning in some digital planning software then printed the template and then we're able to do the surgery to get that implant into the exact position for us to be uh, enabling this to be the ideal position. There he is. You can see that we're tightening this down to 35 newtons. And there's the position. So this is going to be a tissue level abutment for a pickup, and we will come back in two months and we'll be able to get that implant restored, enabling us to be in the ideal location. So there it is. So with that, it's Dr. Scott McLean and uh, just showing you how to use the Medit scanner, the I-700, and getting this so you can do an intro scan of the patient to do the planning, and then coming back and doing a subsequent uh, implant placement by using a printed template. And the printed template is being utilized by doing a wash and dry and also a cure having this all prefabricated prior to the patient coming in and then utilizing the materials that we need to do and having this so that the goal is to have the, the patient come in and have the surgery done and not to have any issues with this kind of uh, overall planning and problems. So he already has suffered enough and uh, so we'll use these materials to fabricate a guide and of course this is the way that you do it. You kind of generate this template and that template is then utilized to get that final position and give, give us what we really need to do an excellent implant placement. So with that is Dr. Scott McLean. I'd like to thank you for your attention. Hope you enjoyed this presentation and take care. Thank you so much, Dr. McLean, for the very insightful presentation. Everyone attending tonight will receive the recording via email within the next week. And if anyone is interested in attending future Henry Schein webinars, visit henryscheindental.com slash webinars for our upcoming schedule. Thank you all for joining us. Have a great night.